the regular meeting of the Wheeling Plan Commission for Wednesday, October 27, 2021. Please stand for the pledge. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. All right. We have uh, Commissioner Blanova is absent with previous notice. Commissioner Berkey. Here. Commissioner Sprague is here. Commissioner Yednak. Present. Commissioner Hyken. Here. Commissioner Riles. Here. Chairman Johnson. Here. Mr. Robles, any changes to the agenda this evening? No changes. All right. Uh, citizens, concerns, and comments. Do we have anything? No. Oh, okay. Petitioner. Right. Uh, moving on, uh, consent items. We have one docket number SCBA 21 13, appearance approval for a freestanding ground sign for Casey's General Store at 1515 East Lake Cook Road. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. You got it. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Yednak? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Items for review. Docket number 2021-38. Special use for package liquor sales. Beerman U.S. at 102 East Dundee Road. Uh, Mr. Secretary. Beerman U.S. Lee is seeking a special use as required in Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code 19-10 use regulations and associated sections in order to permit a packaged liquor sales establishment located at 102 East Dundee Road, which is zone B3 general commercial and office. A special use is defined in the zoning code as a use of parcel of land that requires review and consideration before approval due to the potential for negative impacts on surrounding properties. In order to be considered for a special use, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Planning Commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how the proposed use will not damage the enjoyment or use of the surrounding properties. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that their request meets the standards for a special use as established in Title 19. The Commission Chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting material submitted, the Planning Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. Mr. Robles, is there anything from staff? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, as stated, the request is for a special use to permit a packaged liquor sales establishment at the sub subject location. Um, the packaged liquor sales operation, um, apart from the operational side of things and the liquor uh, operations, which are uh, regulated by the Liquor Control Commission, uh, staff assess this uh, request based on its uh, consistency with the comprehensive land use plan as well as the B3 zoning of the subject property, which uh, based on the, the fundamental type of use uh, is consistent with that, uh, which is uh, reflected in the staff recommendation um, for approval. In the staff packet, you will see that there are uh, emailed letters that were provided to staff in advance of the meeting, which have been included, uh, stating their um, position on the matter. Um, just Monday, we received another letter from a Mr. Stephen uh, Adidin, and I apologize if I uh, mispronounce that, uh, which has been provided at the dais uh, this after this evening. Uh, staff has asked that this letter be entered into the public record um, as part of uh, public comment. And um, in terms of the Planning Commission's review of this, uh, in addition to the staff comment, um, uh, as with any special use, uh, the, the plan Commission is um, you know, also charged with uh, taking in the public comment. Uh, any other commentary that's provided 
um, as, it, as it's rel relative to the proposed use in formulating the recommendation. Um, staff does have a proposed condition uh, should the plan commission uh, choose uh, to vote on this. Uh, staff does have a, a proposed uh, recommendation that I will uh, read into the record here uh, that is to read prior to the issuance of a wheeling business license to begin business operations the petitioner shall obtain all necessary licenses from the state of Illinois and the wheeling liquor control commission regarding the sale of packaged liquor at the subject premises um, I can read that again obviously at, at the appropriate time yes. um, and with that if there's any other questions for staff uh, otherwise um, it's all my comments okay is the petitioner here come on up sir have to swear you in. Raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth. Yes. State your name and business address for the record. My name is Timofey Gafonov, and business address is uh, 102 East Dundee Road. And our calling is uh, Birman, U.S. Okay. So can I, I explain? explain yeah. yeah. Explain what you so want to do. So I'm going to present my project. Uh, I'm alone today because my business partner is sick, and I want to explain about our business idea. Uh, this is not a regular liquor store. We are going to sell beer from kegs to go. Our goal is no incidents, and our beer shop is not a competitor to any liquor store. Our customers are people who like the good taste of beer, and they want to spend the evening at home with their family, watching their favorite TV show, and enjoy a really tasty fresh beer without sitting in a bar. Uh, because of the opportunity to buy beer in our store, the amount of people who drive home after a few bottles of beer after watching a game in sport bar will be decreased. Uh, they will be able to have the same quality of beer and snacks at home. We have reached the comments from the community which is located behind our building. So I want to give some explanation. They say that our beer shop probably will increase crime in that area, but I don't understand how. There is some reason why I disagree. First, our store is not going to be cheap and affordable for poor people who might be potential criminals. And draft fresh beer is more expensive than regular beer. So prices will be satisfied for beer lovers, but not for people who have alcohol addiction and who might cause destruction for the village. And the second, uh, we will sell the beer. It's a low percentage alcohol. And also the community said that our location will increase drunk driving, uh, which is not, is not so fair. The US has so many gas stations where people can buy any alcohol and they are located preferably near roads. There is the same situation with our store right across the road. The, is a gas station which existing for a long time. Our store can't affect drunk driving because if people want to drive, like drive after drinking, they just can do it at any gas station. And in the end, I want to remind that our goal is to make people's lives better because we still have a COVID, and a lot of people are still afraid of going to sport bar to watch sport games with friends and drink some beer. And our business will get these people same quality of beer at home and parties. That's it. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. I, if there's anyone in the audience that came to speak on this, I don't believe so, but very well. We do have those letters that are in the packet along with the one that we received a couple of days ago, which will also go into the board packet. Um, so with that, we will move to questions from the commission. Let's start with Commissioner Riles. Um, I just, a little concerned when you say that, um, more or less, and I'm paraphrasing, the price of your, your product um, will uh, deter or eliminate uh, what you classify as poor people. So no. uh, I'm just trying to get an understanding yeah. because you, you, you said poor people usually are uh, associated with no, criminal I, acts from alcohol consumption. Like, so I, I need to understand a little bit what you're, what, what, what you're actually trying to say because that message 
to me. Uh, yeah, and yeah, understand. I don't want to <coughs> say like that about something about poor people or something like that, because like I was explaining the situation about the community asking about the crime situation in this area and how our store can can increase this criminal. I am not understand how it is. Yeah, I, I don't understand either, to be honest with you. Um, the, the community overall is a, uh, a very safe, uh, protected community. Yeah. Um, I've been living here for a number of years. Um, and just to hear um, your explanation as to why you believe your business um, should be in the community because it's going to eliminate criminal activity because it's going to eliminate poor people who are associated with criminal acts, uh, insinuating that so, the other liquor stores, gas stations, or whatever cater to poor people who are led to possibly commit crimes in the community. So that's kind of confusing to me. I don't understand that. Uh, so I want to say that our business and our potential customers uh, is like it's people who are not supposed to be a criminal people. Okay, they're not supposed to be what? Our potential customers, right? There are people who are not supposed to be potential criminal people. Criminal people? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm trying to understand. They are not. They are not a criminal people. They are not. Yeah. So again, I don't understand that, that statement um, because it's, it's alleging that if they don't participate at your premises and your product and they go down the street or whatever, that they're more susceptible to committing a crime based on their alcohol consumption. And that, that sends a confusing message to me if that's your argument as to why you deserve to have an opportunity to, to, to bring your business here to the village. Yeah, I bring this uh, business to the village because I find a good location. And uh, I'm, I was contacted with the property owner. They said, OK, and we started this process. OK, I, it just, um, that stood out to me. And, uh, um, Again, for me as a resident, uh, I, I think it's important for uh, the residents, obviously, to be responsible, but the business owners and operators to be responsible as well, and and not to, uh, you know, isolate or or uh, separate, you know, a community based on what that business owner believes is their economic status in the community, uh, and based on their thoughts on what alcohol consumption means to them. So I, you know, it, it, this is the community, and if, if someone's making X amount of money, it shouldn't deter them from coming to have a great tasting beer, which I believe that's what you are offering. Yeah. Um, which not, if they don't, doesn't mean that they're going to translate to criminal activity, because alcohol consumption is alcohol consumption, right? Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's a top shelf or low shelf. If someone's going to commit an act, they're going to commit the act. So I don't. I don't understand what your, your, your real um, message is behind it, but that was something that stood out to me and uh, uh, somewhat of a concern. Um, that, that's all I have to say. That's it. Uh, let's go to the other end, Commissioner Hyken. Yeah, um, I just have a couple questions that stood out as well. So this is going to be people are going to come in, they're going to sit down, they're going to drink, or is it no, just strictly no, driving? No, we are not able to drink on premises, and it will be prepackaged uh, bottles, plastic or glass, and it will be security seal, and uh, for transport in the, inside the car, and uh, people just take it to go. So packaged in bottles are coming from the manufacturer, or you're going to package them? In we the are going to package. You're going to bottle it right out of the keg, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, and then. Um, so you'll be serving, you're going to be serving food too, is there tasting, nothing, it's nothing in, out, cooked, that's just it? Just some like snack, like uh, ch chips, or just a packaged snack. To take home with them? Yeah. Okay. 
That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Berkey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so you mentioned that there's not going to be any consumption of alcohol on the premises, but in the, uh, in the docket here it does say that there will be some tables, just a few for uh, tasting our beer flavors. So wh how much beer are we, they're going to be tasting? No, it, like this was, uh, this is the first document you're watching because uh, when we sent first documents to the staff for review and get the staff review, we, we have moved and remove some things from our business, and this option we remove. And no any, like, no any alcohol drink on premises. We are not giving anything to try, like, and small portion, nothing. Just okay. taking packaged beer, everything sealed, and grab it to go. So strictly, strictly yeah. just taking from the, the tap into the bottle, sealing the bottle. Yeah, seal on the bottle. We are putting the sticker on the bottle, on the top of cap. To make sure, like, if police can stop our customer, he will say, like, is it open or no? And he will see that sticker on the cup that is present and it is not broken. That means it can be transported. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Uh, Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the uh, plastic and glass bottles that you're talking about, are you supplying those? Uh, no, we are going to order it. Right, but you will have that available in your store? Yeah. Is there a charge for that? Uh, not for plastic, only for glass bottle, but the glass bottle will be reused. Uh, if customer come back with the glass bottle, we can refill it. They can bring it in for yeah. a refill? Yeah, for refill and uh, no charge for, like, for a bottle second time, just for refill. And it will be, we are going to clean and set, sanitize this sanitize. bottle. Yeah. By, it doesn't matter how like customer bring it, he can say that it is clean. It doesn't matter, we are going to sanitize and clean this bottle. And then your your sealing of the of the container. Yeah. What how how do you seal that? So it's a cap and we are going to put a sticker on the cap. A sticker? A across the head, yeah. Mm -hmm. It will be touched glass from one side and glass from second side around the, around the <coughs> cap. Uh, I was wondering if you have any kind of plans to, uh, I, I don't know if you're, any kind of loitering that might happen around your store? No. Hang in, hang out. There's been complaints that your parking lot is used for loitering. Yeah. Um, is there any, uh, do you have any kind of plans at all to mitigate How? that kind of stuff? So we have a parking, like I will see, we have a, like around two parking spot on the front of building and few more parking spot in this parking lot. And we have a big parking lot on the side of our building. And like if our, will be a lot of customer on like at, in time. I think we are going to put some like sign that this is additional parking for our, that our parking lot is full and use additional parking lot. And then will they be able to enter through the back? Uh, no, they go through the they park in front. the back and then walk around the, to yeah, the front yeah, of the yeah, store? Yeah. Uh, one other question is, uh, the shelf life of tap beer after you dispense it from your tap, what's the shelf life of, of the beer after that? What is shelf life? I don't know. How, how long will it be good? Uh, it will be good for, uh, like, we are going to put uh, stickers on our beer, and it's good for uh, just one to two days. One or two days? Yeah, and it will be dated on the big sticker on the bottle. Every bottle will have the sticker with uh, our company name, date when this bottle was filling, date when it will be end, and uh, what kind of beer is it, and how many alcohol is inside. So most people that are going to purchase this are going to want to drink it just about immediately, right? Yeah. Like, that that could be a problem. But 
it will be sealed. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Not once they walk out of your store. What? They can open it as soon as they walk out of your store, right? Like, but every people can do it. Which in could cause problems. Liquor store. I, I understand yeah. that, but it, it still could cause problems. But. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Yadnak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, quick question. I, you're for the police department? I apologize. I don't know your name. I'm just, um, I hate to put you on the spot, but I'm wondering, based on what the petitioner said, is what he's saying true, that, that somebody would not be risking an open container violation with just a seal on there? Not if it was sealed and, and enclosed in a container. Okay. Once it was open, then it'd be subject to violation. But as the petitioner said, I mean, that's, you can do that in any liquor store. You can buy a six pack and start cracking beers on the way home. So, um, so I just wanted to make sure that it sounds like he researched his law and, and I think that they're probably okay in that regards. Yeah, it's um, similar to like if you have a BYOB and you're at a, like a restaurant and they serve wine, they can recork it and then seal it with a... Oh, okay, and, you buy the bottle. It, and, and then you okay. can take the bottle home, and it wouldn't be open container as long as that seal is not broken. So as long as the sticker isn't broken. That's why they're putting the sticker on. I don't buy a lot of bottles of wine in the store, but they usually <laughs> don't make it all the way to the end of the dinner. So <laughs> I've never taken one home. Um, would you? Are you going to allow customers to bring their own containers? I know some beer aficionados, they'll buy growlers, and they go to... Uh, you know, taps and stuff, and they and they fill their growler. Are, are you going to allow that, or is it not going to be allowed because of the way you're doing your your sealing uh, and your? If your it will stickers? be a glass bottle, and it it's if you are talking about the growling bottle, for like it's okay. I mean, so are your stickers going to be flexible enough that? Yeah, well, are you going to allow customers to bring their own bottles, yeah. and are you going to still be able to yes, seal yes, their own? Yes, yes, we will have. So our customer will, to bring your own bottle, you should buy it from us. And we have a plastic, or, and we have a cap, which, will, which we will put on, the bot, on your bottle. Okay, but what I'm, I'm not asking yeah. about the bottles that you supply. I understand what you're doing with the bottles you supply, but there are, I've seen catalogs where you can buy a growler, you can buy something where you can go to a store or go to a bar and you can actually tap your own beer you could buy those empty so i'm just saying so if a customer comes in with their own bottle you're saying you will not allow that they have to only use recycled bottles from you or the plastic bottles yeah. then. so you would decline filling up somebody yeah. else's bottle okay um have you or your partners do you, what's your experience in the liquor sales or running a tavern do you guys have any no, experience this is this the first time all right and um, so you do not currently operate a similar business to this today? No. Um, that the pictures that you showed in your project description letter where you had, where, where were those from? It just was grabbed off the internet. So are, are you doing a, is this a franchise business or did you just see this some state over and thought that's a so good it, idea and you want to try business, to open, open uh, it? is from Russia. Like, uh, I was live, uh, in Russia, like. I'm here for five years. Okay. And when I live in Russia, it's a lot of this business in Russia. Okay, so this yeah. is similar to yeah. something that yeah, you had in another country. I, I was see the same business in only one in US in New it was in New York, but they was work the same, but they was have uh, tables and small restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so those pictures are from a a, a, a facility a business in another yeah, country. Yeah. Um, and the, your one thing that did concern me a little bit, I mean, you're, you're calling your business opening or supplying a craft beer, high premium beers, but a lot of your beers are just basic American beers that you get anywhere. I mean, is your long-term intent to try to phase out your Miller lights and your Bud lights and go with more, you know, maybe work with some smaller, uh, uh, breweries, local breweries or something, try to get more. Uh, it will I would be. think that that would be what people would draw to your business if they were able to get something that they just can't go down to the package liquor store and pick up a six pack of Miller Lite. Yeah, like package beer, like it's very different taste between glass bottle, which is stay in liquor store for like a few months, yeah, 
and our beer. It's really fresh and tasty. This difference. Like if you beer if you drink beer in bar, yeah, you take beers, they take it from your from keg to you. And it's if you try to put glass bottle of of the same beer and uh, beer from the keg, you will see big difference between the that's assuming you're doing a big turnover and, and you're able to turn over your kegs a lot. <laughs> if your kegs, if you're not doing a great business, your kegs are going to sit there for a while too. But I mean, you know, I wish you the best of luck with doing a great business. Um, last question I have then, I guess this is for staff or, le or legal. Um, one of the questions that they ask is like, you know, will it change the essential character of the area? We've got you know, this is one of the first times we've had a public hearing where we've actually gotten some significant responses, or not significant, but a few. And so the the local people are concerned. Should that be something that we as commissioners should sway us, or is it more my opinion whether I think this is going to impact the area? I'm not, you know, within, well, I mean, within walking distance, but this is not right around the corner from my house. Um, I wonder, how do we absorb the comments from the, the public? Uh, very good question. And, and because it's a public hearing and we, we did receive public comment, that needs to be taken in, into consideration. And however, you personally take it into consider, consideration as it relates to that standard. So if you believe the public commentary uh, and, and, based on, and based on what, they, what they've indicated is, is that, that the proposed use is not consistent with the essential character or is, then, then you can take that information and, and make that determination as to whether or not it, whether or not the proposed use and the public comment are consistent with the standard or inconsistent with the standard. If anything you feel is inconsistent with the standard, then that, that leads to whether or not the special use is, is appropriate. Okay. All right. I was just wondering if it's, it's like testimony in court, if I'm, I guess I'm kind of the jury, whether I accept that testimony. Well, we are. You're kind of like the jury slash judge yeah. of weighing, yeah. and you know everyone has commented. <clears throat> sometimes, I mean, we've seen other ones where there's been comment, and it may not be actually like relevant to the use or concerns are outside the scope. Right. Of yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Use. Yeah. Those. Some um, of those. Yeah. I think we. So you kind of have to weigh the the evaluate the weight of the comment okay. and, and what they put. And our in. role is to represent the public of Wheeling. So. We well, but I guess to, part of the, part of my thought, to uh, just to just to, to to say what I'm thinking though, is that I'm I'm not sure that the people that have submitted com concerns are necessarily legitimate concerns. I tend to I think this is going to be a tough business, but I tend to agree a little bit more with the petitioner in that that any liquor store could cause the same issues. I mean, he's true. Right around the corner, there's got the gas stations, you got the big liquor store right at Milwaukee and, and Dundee, and somebody could walk, you know, those are all within walking distance of the same area. I don't know if one more liquor store is going to tip the balance. Um, but but I don't know if I need to just say, well, but then again, like I said, this is not necessarily right across from me. So I, I, I'm not sure if, I guess I, I understand what you're saying, I'm re representing the public, but it depends on whether I think that their concern is, not, I don't want to say legitimate, but it's if it's weighty, if it's really going to be a problem that they anticipate. Um, that's all I have then, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I think that's everybody but me. Um, how big are these bottles that you're... It's uh, between, like, it's start from one liter up to two liters. Okay. Now, you say there's not going to be any tasting or anything. You're going to have some, hopefully, more unusual beers than what was in your write-up yeah. um, that people are going to want to taste. Yeah, yeah I understand <laughs> um, You're not going to allow any tasting? Mm. I, I just see that as you're going to be tempted to do it. Yeah, we was to remove it because it, like, have a lot of... Uh, difference between the liquor license and if, if you say it, we can add this option. No, that, like, that's, not, yeah. that's not for this group to yeah. say. I, I'm just questioning if you're going to be able to avoid giving samples. 
No, we are not going to give somebody trying to take Try, to try something. Because they're going to come in and see different names <clears throat> on your taps and go, oh, that sounds interesting. This is for beer lovers, and I hope they know the difference between, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any other um, liquor operations like this around here? I mean, you mentioned one in New York, but has yeah, but done any research? Uh, any yeah, way? staff did did actually do some research on on this type of of uh, business, and there seemed to be more concentrated within the city, um, where where you um, where you as a customer go in. Uh, a lot of those worked off a card reader system, where you you have a certain amount or certain volume on your card that. Mm -hmm. regulates how much you can get within the, the evening or what have you but also what we saw with those was there was an element of, of you know tables and chairs where you can drink you know you can drink right. as well so um, there there were businesses that allowed for the customer to pour their own alcohol but many of them were were um, seating was also included with that and the reason that we're not allowing seating is because of sprinklers that is correct. So if he's just selling it, he's a mercantile. If he uh, goes into serving it, then it becomes an assembly use group, and then the building would have to have sprinklers installed, which can be costly for them. And that one doesn't have any right now? There's no sprinklers in that building. It's a pretty old building. Yes. Yeah. In addition to that, that would change this from alcohol sales to a tavern or yep. a or a you know restaurant if they if food was being served as well so there's the the land use element of that as well okay and this is something that the liquor commission can actually consider too um, depending on the class that they apply for and the conditions in that within that class so I would actually I know I had mentioned to Steve maybe making a condition but I think that would be within the purview of the liquor commission to put any scope on samplings essentially making what a condition oh i had initially said because there's this confusion about um whether or not there'd be consumption on the premises right. to make it a condition of the special use but i actually in further reflection think we leave it to the liquor commission because like a class d1 a class d license does allow a small amount of sampling of like two ounces of beer if they got that license versus a different license mm. so Let's leave that to the liquor commission okay. to regulate. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't because there is a special use here is not for a tavern. It would. It wouldn't Correct. allow for the full uh, liquor license for uh, complete. You know, on-site con complete consumption. It would just be the sampling, as, as mentioned. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I didn't picture. Like how Benny's as... does a sampling. Like that's what that liquor license was written for. Which, like Benny's does sorry. tastings. Oh yeah. That's kind of, and there's, that's a packaged liquor sale, liquor store. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions from the commission? Look to my right. Mr. Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, does the, can the liquor commission revoke his license if the concerns of the uh, residents, th those concerns got out of hand? Uh, if his premises um, invoked violations, then yes, they could, it, his license, his liquor license and business license could be subject to suspension or revocation. Okay. But, not, but not the impacts on the neighborhood. <clears throat> I think that's what Commissioner Spriggs is asking. If there were a bunch of people buying from the store, walking around the corner, opening their containers and drinking in the alleys and stuff, that wouldn't be cause for the liquor license to be, that would be an enforcement issue of the police. Right, that would be an enforcement would, issue of the police, correct. But but that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be grounds to revoke his license, I don't think. I'd have to look further at the code to see whether or not it would, but initially, most likely not. I mean, yeah, because if that were the case, then you could go back to any you know, you go to Walgreens and say, well, you bought that at Walgreens, we're going to pull your liquor license because you're drinking in the alley. I don't right. think, I don't think it would, I don't but think that nexus would be made. There would have to be a really, really 
close nexus like it'd be more like if they were still sitting in the parking lot on the property and not somehow they were encouraging the behavior yeah uh -huh. okay anything further from the police department on this Okay. Fire. Here. We covered your part of it. All right. Um, so we we have one condition on this. Uh, that's correct. Uh, and, and again, that is prior to the issuance of a wheeling business license to begin business operations, the petitioner shall obtain all necessary licenses from the state of Illinois and the Wheeling Liquor Com Control Commission regarding the sale of alcohol at the subject premises. Which is basically basically just saying he needs to get all his licensing before we can issue right. a business license. All right. So, do I hear a motion on this? So moved. Commissioner Yednick. No second. Second. <laughs> Commissioner Berkey. Commissioner Yednick. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Hyken. No. Commissioner Riles? No. Chairman Johnson? No. So we have a 3-3. Three, three. So, yep, three yes, three no votes. So that's a, that's a tie vote. And in that case, it's a no vote. Um, so with this, this, this is a tie vote. So it goes, it goes as a vote of it did not receive enough positive votes for a positive recommendation. This will still move forward to the Planning Commission. The so, board. Or sorry, village the board. village board. We're at the planning commission. It'll move forward to the village board. So we will follow up with you tomorrow, um, and and or tomorrow or Friday, and give you a summary of what's what's the next steps are on that, and okay. the next village board meeting that you'll be on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Yes. 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 Thank yep. you. Good luck. Uh, I need a motion to close 2021-38. So moved. Second. I can and Yednick. Yednick. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Yednak? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. All right, moving on. Docket number 2021-43A, special use for ground transportation service, small, uh, Safeway Transportation Services Corporation, 1030 South Milwaukee Avenue. Mr. Secretary. Safeway Transportation Services Corporation, LEC is seeking special use approval as required in Chapter 19-10 use regulations and associated sections in order to permit a ground transportation service, small, located at 1030 South Milwaukee Avenue, which is zone B3 general commercial and office and I3 general industrial. A special use is defined in the zoning code as a use of parcel of land that requires review and consideration before approval due to the potential for negative impacts on the surrounding properties. In order to be considered for a special use, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Planning Commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how the proposed use will not damage the enjoyment or use of the surrounding properties. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that their request meets the standards for special uses established in Title 19. The Commission Chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting materials submitted, the Planning Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. Steve, anything on this? Um, yes, for the Planning Commission, uh, there's, this is a, a two-part uh, request. The uh, item A is for the special use and item B is for the variation, which I'll, I'll just speak to both uh, since they're related. Uh, the special use obviously is for a ground transportation uh, service, um, small, uh, which is um, permitted in a B3 commercial zoning. Uh, the site is currently split. Uh, the eastern half is a B3 zone. The western half is I-3. The proposed use is not uh, occurring in the I-3 portion, so this is all within the permissibilities of the uh, zoning code. Uh, the use is consistent not only with the, uh, the B-3 zoning, but also with the um, land use, uh, the comprehensive land use plan, for uh, which is industrial, but the property has historically been used for a mixture of industrial and commercial uses. 
Uh, in regards to the variance, uh, the ground trans transportation small category that's permitted in the B3 uh, only uh, limits the number of vehicles to, to six. However, uh, based on the petitioner's operation, they, they uh, propose to have up to 50 um, vehicles. Uh, as indicated in the letter, not all 50 vehicles are going to be located at the property at the same time. Uh, given the, the, um, the fact that there won't be all vehicles at the property at the same time and that there's sufficient parking both uh, on the uh, surface parking lot but as well as inside the building, um, that uh, staff believes that that is a, um, a reasonable request and uh, recommends approval of both the special use and uh, the variance. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? <laughs> well, if you're all going to speak, I need to swear you all in. <laughs> probably, I can, I can probably do most of the talking. <laughs> okay. You swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth? Absolutely. And your name and business My address? My name's Robert Long. I'm an attorney at Daniels Long and Pinsel, and I represent Safeway Transportation. With me is Bernie Block, the corporate attorney, and I also have Lucky Sahota who's the uh, owner of the business with us tonight, as well as one of his safety manager, whose name I can't remember. <laughs> well, if he comes up, we'll find out. If he comes up. We'll find up, out together. We need to know. That's right. <laughs> What's, uh, and thank you for, for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. It's uh, always good to visit another village. I've represented so many of them over the years. It's good to see something live and uh, real life once more. This, uh, the, re the real reason that the company located here has something to do with a sister unit of government. You know, essentially, what Safeway does is it transports special needs kids and brings them to and from school and from other events that they have to do. That's its primary focus. And of course, they've expanded now to uh, around 30 school districts that they service throughout northeastern Illinois. It's a, growing business. It has a lot of opportunities to demonstrate. It provides a lot of jobs for a lot of drivers and dispatchers as well as the office staff and the managers and of course two lawyers so I mean, that, that's not all bad. <laughs> but what essentially has happened here is that and I think this is uh, maybe not un, it's somewhat parochial although I think it was it, probably less in favor these days. It certainly was a lot more common in years gone by that you would have to have a local presence in order to qualify for a, a contract with a local unit of government or in some instances even to get local licenses, much like there used to be residency requirements for cops and, and firemen and the rest of it, and those are pretty much gone away everywhere other than the city of Chicago at the present time. But since the Wheeling School District requires it, it puts uh, an interesting economic pressure onto this. And that is that Lucky had to go around and try to find a place that would actually meet the needs of this particular business down here and find a way to make it fit. Now the presence of the dispatch is a good start, but the problem is, is that his, uh, the next nearest facility he has, and he's not gonna run incidentally all 30 school districts out of this site, that's, that's not what the plan is. But the next nearest facility he has is all the way up in Waukegan. Having made the misfortune of trying to drive down here through, from Waukegan during rush hour, I can tell you that's not the easiest drive in the world, and it's kind of irritating when you have to drive past his place, go all the way down to uh, Willow Road and then turn around and come back, but you know that's that's what it is. Our problem is is that a lot of our drive, a lot of Safeways drivers do that every morning and every night. Some of them a couple times a day. That adds that adds significantly to the cost that he has to bear, and increases the expense and the uh, just the the difficulty of keeping people on staff and making sure that they have the ability to uh, properly service the account, be available for the kids when the kids need it, and make sure that the parents' needs are met because you're talking about disabled kids that in many cases have working class parents that have to be able to get to work and rely on the transportation that's available and should be safe and it should be efficient. And when the longer you have to travel as a whether you uh, whether you send a bus load of them from Waukegan or uh, send them in individual vehicles, doesn't make much difference because if they get stuck in traffic and don't get here on time, you inconvenience a lot of people. 
And they also, it's also another uh, spin-off factor of it is that it's uh, a bit of a hardship for the community in the context that, lo that Safeway offers good paying jobs uh, up to, uh, what do you offer, a $4,000 signing bonus, I yes. think, this month? $4,000 signing bonus and starting yep. pay is $18 so you're, you're, you're given some pretty decent jobs out here, and unfortunately, if the people have to travel down from Waukegan, the job pool is not the Wheeling job pool. It's going to be the, it's going to be the Waukegan pool from Park City, maybe Gurney or places like that, but it's not going to be from this area. Now, I realize that under the LaSalle factors, they typically talk about, uh, they typically talk about hardship in the context of the particular property, problem here is it's a systemic hardship and the hardship that's being proposed is, and that I think exists and staff concurs with me I believe Mr. Robles and uh, Marcy certainly did is that the requirement from your sister unit of government the school district uh, puts a premium on the availability of, of sites which in Brings us to the market, and the market, unfortunately, is such that we haven't. Uh, the Safeway wasn't able to find a place that could uh, locate that was reasonably available at a price they could afford, and met their needs and was fully entitled. So that gets us back to what do you have to do? You have a hardship. Somehow you have to find a way to make this meet. I think this is a prime example of when governments can work together, even if they haven't. Uh, and I, I don't really know whether you have or haven't. I, I tend to believe that the school boards tend to operate very independently of village government in almost all instances. But it's an opportunity to work with a fellow unit of government and make sure that the needs of the community are met by putting on a presentation, or excuse me, a, uh, allowing a special use that will uh, permit the, the convenient transportation and safe transportation of kids throughout the community as well as offer jobs while at the same time proposing a use for property which is not remotely inconsistent with the surrounding uses to the west is the waste management facility and that's certainly a heavy industrial industrial type of use doesn't smell too good incidentally even tonight uh, when I drove by it earlier there's a lot of cars up and down this block a few more vehicles one way or another probably isn't going to make any discernible difference in this particular area. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, while uh, Safeway currently has a two-year lease on the property, there's no indication one way or another that it would ever be extended or that the landlord is interested in selling the property or anything like that. So our request is for the existing use. And with that, you know, I just want to thank staff for its efforts at helping me walk through your zoning process and the opportunity to present. I'd be happy to take any questions you might have. All right. Again, this is a public hearing, but it uh, looks like the only public we have are your folks. They're all my people. They're all <laughs> going to say this is a great idea. <laughs> so we'll go to the commission. Commissioner Yednick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just point of clarification are we going to cover both of these at the same time because I've got some just well, different we, questions for different topics we didn't officially open the other one oh okay so so no, right, well, I, mr. Robles mentioned some points yeah. on the other one so so we'll come back to around and I can go to those questions okay um, it, I guess one of the things uh, well let me just clarify so I read the letters, you're saying 50 vehicles, but your letter said only 25 because I did like a Google map search and I think there's about 35 parking spaces there because I think this, the note said that you're not allowed to use the gravel lot in the back for vehicles. They're, correct. So they're not using the gravel lot to the to the west, um, but uh, based on the site plan and uh, confirming with, with our um, uh, satellite images. There's actually 60 exterior spaces on the on the property. There's 60 exterior. Yeah, yeah, 60 counted um, from the site plan, and, and that lined up with. Okay, well, yeah, on this picture, then, so I guess what would it be? It's south, the south side of the building. Yes. That to me looked pretty much like a driveway. There is a driveway. They have uh, they have four parallel parking spaces there um, that fit within the south end of the property. 
Why should um, it count 60? I, I might the rest, the rest are, uh, the rest are, uh, the, the, the t traditional parking spaces they see are, there's uh, 56 of those. But you're counting some in the building too, or no? No, that's that's just all exterior. Parking. I better go back to Google Maps and count again. All right, I only <laughs> count about 35. I wasn't counting the south side of the building because I didn't, that looked to me more like a driveway. So it's only going to be the vans? Because I, when I went by the property earlier this week, there was also a, a large bus out there, a school bus. Yeah, those will be parked overnight inside the building. The school buses or the vans? Yeah, whatever school buses they have would be parked inside the building, so they wouldn't be. So approximately how many buses are you planning to run out of? I think so they can hold about half a dozen of those things inside the building. It's a large building. Okay, okay. Um, but, you know, the primary, the, the primary mode of transportation for these kids is, in fact, the vans, the individualized vans. You, they really don't move many kids with those I'm, I'm buses. I'm very, very familiar. You happen to catch me. I'm a... a Two hour a week, two hour a day retirement job as a school bus driver for for <laughs> students. So, so I'm, I'm very familiar with the business. That, that brought me to some. You heard his thing about the signing bonus, right? <laughs> uh, well, that, I didn't say that. They're paying me pretty well, Excuse and I'm, all, I'm only doing it for medical insurance. <laughs> yeah, my paychecks are zero dollars. <coughs> it's a union job, so no, yeah, they, they it does it does pay well. If I want to advertise to people that if you're looking for a job, driving these vans and school buses is uh, pays well. Um, but I was just wondering if you've done any, well, oh, the, the other question I had when I went by, the driveway on Industrial Lane right now is fenced off. Are you planning on opening that or you're only going to e egress and ingress from off of Milwaukee? So will you try to, because going back to my experience as a school bus driver, we all come off of uh, Aptekissick by the U-Haul and all the buses and all the vans, they leave around the same time because the school schedules are the same time. So you end up stacking up on the streets. I, I drove by it myself this afternoon and I didn't see a problem with getting in around the fence. That, that wasn't a closed fence. Um, it was kind of angled. I mean, maybe it, I took it a. It is kind of angled. I took a quick look at it, but I, so you're planning on using that? So you will, well, because that that's what I was wondering sense. if you did any traffic studies. Because the other thing too, when you go out of the driveway in the front, you have to cross over. It's a low island, but you can get over that island. Right. Um, and I don't know if I doubt would be have any concerns or with that if you have to check with them. Like, are you allowed to even make a left turn out of that other driveway over that low island? That'd be a terrible idea, I think. Pardon? I think that would be a terrible idea, personally, to try to make a left turn out of that and have right turns and left turns within about 100 feet of itself. Mm -hmm. But no. So you're the, uh, the primary just, left turn you'd want to make would be off commercial or off industrial. industrial. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I, I did. Yeah. And in fact, the safety. Uh, Lucky just reminded me. The safety people tell us not to not to allow left turns out of that site just for the reason I mentioned they're too close to each other oh so it's all going to be right only so you're going to or or all oh, out of the driveway but mm -hmm. but they can yeah, make I'm left or right off of the industrial right because that's a public street so you're going to utilize industrial okay then. that's correct so, all right all right um so you'll be dispatching 20 to 25 vans at a time because of the, because the school schedules you know they all start they all need to get out well i mean we stagger ours i have arrival times at different schools i'm not doing the the sped buses, but um, I, I did ask, I don't, I don't know if you did, did you do any traffic studies or was it necessary? Did you think it was necessary to do Not with the amount of vehicles that are down there and the uh, marginal increase that there would be, you know. I mean, I got stuck down there at, uh, when I was leaving, I, I went down and drove down industrial in the middle of rush hour today. I got behind four vehicles and I could turn left in about five minutes. Well, I, this, I, my concern is more, I think, for your own personal business, because I'm wondering if you're, if you're going to run into this. The school schedule might be similar to the waste management schedule, and if you're going you're to have a lot of concerns about, you know, I want you to have a facility that's going to work for you. Um, you know, the problem is, is that, again, we, you run into that market-driven hardship issue, which is there are find a lot of other sites that you have available, and this is about the best one they could locate, too. And you still need to have the be able to provide the service. It may be somewhat inconvenient, 
but I'll guarantee it's a whole lot better than having to have people drive down from Waukegan. I understand that. Yeah, that makes more sense. I, I was surprised that that was what you were doing right now to service this area. Yeah, it costs um, a fortune. That's all I had. I, I was mostly concerned with the parking, but I probably miscounted the spots then. If staff, if staff evaluate, I'll trust their judgment. That's all <laughs> I have, you, Mr. Sir. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Robert. Good evening. Uh, my only question was, I, I noticed there was um, curb and gutter on the north and east sides and not on the south and west sides. Is it, was that something that's uh, required for the parking? If they were building a new parking lot, yes. Okay. Um, this, this property is, uh, had, a, had a history. Um, and uh, the previous the the previous operator uh, the auto repair had uh, larger plans to improve the the property uh, to the west that included <clears throat> all the upgrades all the site upgrades but that didn't happen so this is a pre-existing parking lot with um, you know since they're not adding anything new that's not required okay thank you that's all I have <clears throat> okay. thank you thank you Commissioner Berkey thank you mr. chairman um, so you're going to have 25 vans on site, and there's going to be another 25 vehicles that will be they'll be taking them home. Uh, give or take a few, yeah, but that's about the count. Okay. Will there be any instances where they won't take those vehicles home? I can't think of any. Okay. You know, I mean, this is the for, this is their convenience. It, essentially, it's an opportunity for them to avoid having to buy an extra vehicle to drive. Okay. You know, um, to their economic advantage to do it. Okay, so they would head out straight from their homes to their pickup routes? Those folks will, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess the only other thing would be, you know, Milwaukee is a pretty busy street. Um, <clears throat> sure is. That, you know, all the vehicles coming in, coming out at the same time, roughly, would, you know, maybe, you might want to keep that in mind as far as, you know, knowing what kind of traffic is going to be coming through there, because it could be difficult, especially if you're making a left turn going north on Milwaukee, that can be a challenging. Well, if we can figure out how to get the schools on a different, uh, stagger their schedule, that would make life a lot easier. <laughs> but they of don't course. tend to do that very much. Right. So we're kind of driven by that market tells sure. us what we have to do. There would be some probably staggering, though, based on where the student is being picked up from. So obviously if they're sure. further away, you're going to have to leave earlier from the site to pick them up versus a student who's only five minutes away. So there will be some staggering, I bet. That's absolutely true. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Did it? Uh, let's go to this end, Commissioner Riles. <laughs> thank you. I, I have no questions. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Well, thank you. All right. Riles. Then back to Commissioner Hyken. Yeah, I just have one question. First of all, thanks for coming to Wheeling. Um, looks like a good site that it w will work for you. My question is is kind of silly, but there is a sign up there that says "Paintless Dent Repair." Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Is that going to come it's down? It's the gold artist thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a separate petition that's uh, for uh, for the sign issue. Okay. There yeah, are. no other questions then. Uh, and my question was answered, so typically these are the, the smaller vans, mm -hmm. the, what, seven passenger vans? About 10, 12, I think, yeah. is about what you can get in there. But, you know, the, uh, they're often equipped for kids with handicaps, so right. uh, so the number is kind of flexible. Yeah, I'm just size-wise. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have any conditions on this? No conditions. No conditions. Any other <coughs> questions from the commission? Nope. Then I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Greg and Yednick. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Yednack? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. And that's it. We need a motion to close 2021-43A before we move on to the other one. So moved. Second. Second. Who was it? Ah, Berkey. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Yednack? Yes. Commissioner Eichen? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. All right, 2021-43B, the variation to exceed the maximum fleet size for a ground transportation service, small for Safeway Transportation, 1030 South Milwaukee. 
Um, Steve, you already did your thing on this? That's correct, Tim. I think is uh, Commissioner Sprague going to oh, read the... Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Trying to squeeze me out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Safeway Transportation Services Corporation leasee is seeking a variation from Chapter 19-01 definitions and associated sections to permit the maximum fleet size to exceed six vehicles for a ground transportation service small located at 1030 South Milwaukee Avenue, which is zone B3 General Commercial and Office and I3 General Industrial. A zoning variation is intended to be a method of adjustment to equalize regulations where the zoning code has created an unnecessary hardship. A variation is designed to allow affected property owners the same rights and privileges that others enjoy in the same zoning district. In order to be granted a variation, a petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Plan Commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how their individual situation is unique or unusual. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that the request for variation meets the standards established in Title 19. The Commission Chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting materials submitted, the Plan Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. Um, staff didn't have anything to no, on this? No, the comments. Okay. No. All right, so we'll go through the, uh, Commissioner Yednick, you had some things on this one? I did, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first question I had was for legal or staff, is that um, does the variation go with the business or with the location? So if we grant this variation and coincidentally a similar business comes in, would they automatically get the same variation? So typically variations go with the land. Uh, this one's a little bit unique. It'll, it'll go with the land as well as the special use. So um, we, uh, staff does transfer special uses from one business to the next if it's the exact same business and they agree to all, you know, terms, conditions, what have you, of the, of the authorizing ordinance. With that would, would be the, the variance as well. If a similar business went in and needed more vehicles, uh, then they would have to come back and, and, and seek a new variance. Um, if the use... Is, uh, it, it does not operate for a period of at least six months, then automatically the, the business is deemed closed and, and the associating legislation also, um, also is voided at that point as well. Okay. Okay, so it would have to be a real high coincidence that somebody else came in Correct. very soon after they may have vacated. Right, the use would, would have to mirror this. Right. Okay. It'd have right. to be a grand tour. I, I thought I remembered that one time you said that variations. And go they do with run with the, the land because it's usually something like setback or um, like things that are physical on the properties. So okay. Typical for variations. This is more for a, um, a scope of the use. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, you touched on. I had a question when I was reading your response to bullet four, and you touched on it earlier about you said that Safeway only has a short term lease. Um, so I, I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit more about that. I mean, so are, I, I, it sounds like you've had a lot of trouble finding a facility that would work for yourself. Um, so are you kind of just plugging the dike here temporarily and, and kicking the can down the road or hoping to get a long-term lease? I mean, it, or it seems like you're going through a lot of effort and you only got a two-year commitment. I'm, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, and for the record, I remain under oath. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Let me just fill that in. Um, well, it was difficult to find a spot in the first place. And, of course, once you have a location, it's always the desire of a business to extend the term of the lease if it's a successful operation. Now, there are different market factors that build into this. Uh, some of them I've already talked about, and I don't want to repeat myself, but one of those factors is that these uh, the school districts bid these contracts out so that there is never certainty that the company will have this account for the next 60 years or right, 12 right. years or two years or six years. It's just not that type of a, of a business. So there has to be some flexibility built into it that if there is a problem, a downturn in the market, some, something changes, they lose the contracts here and there, who knows? It 
that could be a problem. Another pandemic could set things off in all sorts of different directions. We can't predict that kind of future. Then there's also the, uh, the practical issue of the landlord. Um, you know, we were aware that there was a, a requirement on the property that the landlord put in a sewer, for example, based out of that lawsuit uh, eight or ten years ago, whenever it was. And, you know, that's, the landlord has to do that. Now, what that'll do to the value of the property and what he wants for it and whether he's interested in selling it or whether, uh, whether another property that would be uh, more acceptable, uh, more uh, fully entitled, uh, might better fit whatever need the company might have in the future, don't know. Those are factors beyond our control, so we can't, we can't really predict them. It's not that... But it's not that we're treating this as, uh, you know, just just trying to get a, a you know, a, a, a weekly stay at the uh, at the Marriott Suites just for the time being. Uh, they'd like to find a way to make this work on a long-term basis. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. Th I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think about the school contract aspect of it. But I was just thinking in terms of. Well, they you know, it seems like you're doing a lot of work to try. I, but it sounds like it could be. There's an advantage and a disadvantage to having a short-term lease. The advantage is if you well, when you if you don't renew the contract, then you don't have to, you're not saddled with the property. I guess when you but. start figuring out, you know, they're paying eighteen to twenty dollars an hour for people to drive, and you're you're shipping twenty-five or thirty of them, spending two and a half, three hours a day on the road from Waukegan, you're wasting god awful lot of money. So you you got to find a way to meet the market and the vehicle here. expense too. Yeah. So okay. Um, that, I was just it was more of a curiosity thing of that you're doing a lot of work and and you only got a two year commitment. I was just wondering why, but you you explained it earlier about the landlord's needs, the business needs, and the yeah. school. I was just curious about that. To, more looking to clarify what that statement meant, and I think you've done that. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We're good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Berkey, anything on the variation? Uh, no, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, no questions. Commissioner Hagen? No questions. Mr. Riles? No, and I do want to say you know, thank you uh, for the simple fact that you're trying to find a, uh, a better solution for the safety of the kids, but also to try to bring employment to people who may be looking for work. So uh, I do want to say it is commendable. Oh, we appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you very much, sir. We thank feel welcome. And Mr. Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, my question is for uh, Mr. Robles. Um, does the, is the zoning keeping this from becoming a large fleet? Um, it's there. There's no specification for large, other than it must be more than six vehicles. Oh, okay. And that's very. It's very arbitrary because. Is 10 vehicles large and six vehicles not? So anything above, I understand you had, you know, staff had to, you know, when we created that code requirement, you had to have a minimum, set a minimum. In this okay. case, it was six, but in the realities of it is, is two more vehicles, three more vehicles make it a large than at that point. Oh, okay. So it's the fact that they set, they established, uh, they being the previous staff set, set a minimum number and anything above that is, 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 a, is a large. So thing. whether it was a small or a large, they still would have had to have a variance. Uh, well, no, anything, every, anything over, anything over six makes it a large operation, but we didn't deem, we didn't feel that this is a large ground transportation operation because okay. it's not, it's not your, tr your typical um, yellow bus, you know, first student type mm -hmm. of thing with the types of vehicles and everything else. So we didn't feel that that was an appropriate title for this type of business. But that could have avoided the variance though, right? Uh, it, 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 it could have, but there are other there are other okay. implications in on, in that regard. Okay, thank you. That's all I had. Um, that's everybody. I just had a, a question: Is there any maximum cap on how many? No. So there's no. Not by the code. Not okay. by the code. There's no small, large, and gargantuan. No, correct. <laughs> correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, if there are any more questions, I would entertain a motion. I guess one, you, you made me think yes. of a question is, uh, what would be the governor to make sure they're complying? I mean, it would, it would have become an enforcement issue if they had 
trucks and vans stacked up all over the place and not parking in designated parking spots and stuff. I, yes. Not, not casting any aspersions on you or your business, but I was just curious if... Uh, the uh, the project description letter uh, establishes uh, that's uh, attached with the ordinance, the, the authorizing legislation. So that that project description letter sets that that uh, parameters. So if they go above that and it starts to become an enforcement problem where there are vehicles um, parking where they shouldn't be out on the streets, what have you, then we have the ability to fall back on the letter and, and use that to say that's your that's that's your um, threshold in which you have to operate within. Okay. So so just by granting this. It can't blow the doors open. Correct. Okay. All right. Thanks. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Okay. Um, so there were no conditions on this. So I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. You got it. Commissioner Eichen. Yes. Commissioner Yadnak. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. Welcome to Wheeling. Well, thank you, folks. We thank appreciate you. it very much. We'll thank you for up. all your work. Thank follow you. up regarding the uh, next board meeting. Day. Absolutely. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Yeah. Close the public hearing. On that. And now we have a motion to close 2021-43B. So moved. Second. That was uh, Commissioner Eichen. Eichen, yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Eichen? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Yednak? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Uh, approval of minutes. Uh, approval of minutes of the regular meeting of October 13th, 2021, including the findings of fact for docket number 2021-37. So moved. Second. Commissioner Yednak, Commissioner Berkey? Commissioner Yednak? Yes. Oh, Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. We, I keep forgetting we could do a voice vote on that. <laughs> Other business? Steve, anything to share? Yes. Uh, the next uh, month, uh, November as well as December, that's as a reminder that the plan commission shifts to the first and third Wednesdays of every month rather than the current third and, or second and fourth. With that, the next meeting on the schedule is November 3rd. However, at this moment, there isn't anything on that agenda, so that meeting will be canceled. Uh, we do have agenda items for the November 17th meeting, including the 2022 Plan Commission calendar. So we will have those items as well as the calendar to approve at the 17th. So we it's are, officially canceled or? Officially canceled. Or could it's be. not officially canceled until we publish that is canceled, but just so you guys know, um, we're informing you that. So it there's no be. chance some will come in and we'll try At it. this point, no, it's too okay. late. Yeah, we're correct. Thank you. Yeah, it, it would be too late if it just came in now. Okay. Okay, uh, other business, Commissioner Hyken. Nope, nothing for me, thank you. Commissioner Berkey. Nothing for me, thank you. Commissioner Yednak. I do have one thing. I apologize that I always do. Um, I don't know if anybody's noticed. I just, I just picked up on it last week or so. Have you seen the really nice new wheeling welcome to the village signs in the dark? Um, the shadowing is just, they, I wonder if we could consider something about the lighting because the, the, they don't look good in the dark with the lighting that's currently on them. Well, yeah, it, it's up lighting and the letters extend out. So it, yeah, the it shadow makes, is it above. It some really weird shadows. You can't hardly <laughs> read them and it almost needs more like a front lighting somehow. Um, yeah, I, I came home, pointed out to Alice on the way home last night. She was like, oh, my God, because I, I just noticed it the other day. I think I was coming out of Milwaukee, and now I see the one by 83 in Lake Cook. I, it might be too late to do anything about it, but I don't really, I thought we saw pictures of the potential lighting effect, but they didn't give us the way it looks in real life. Huh? There, there are two types of lighting with that. There's backlight, uh, which provides a, a, a glowing effect on the actual sign itself, and then there's um, uh, ground-mounted floodlights to, to provide the uplight, additional lighting to that. Um, so uh, in working with uh, Public Works, we could we can see if there's any potential options, but we'll, we'll talk with uh, the village manager's office first. Oh, so there already is backlighting on those? There is, there is, a, there is a backlighting. It's, it's very subtle, which I think is why the reason why we, the, the, the uh, scope of the project included the, the ground-mounted lights. 
Uh, I think the floodlights is what make it look really weird and, and eerie. Well, yeah, that's that's what's creating the shadows. Yeah, it's, it's possible, but, yeah. but we'll we'll uh, we'll. Discuss I just happened to notice in the last couple of days, and it's unfortunate because they're really nice signs. They look great in the daylight, um, but I. But, but did that. did you notice that on all the signs, or just a particular area? I think the two that stood out. It was the one here on Milwaukee, or I mean, I'm sorry, Milwaukee over by. Those are the ones I've seen in the dark. Um, by. Uh, by uh, Pawaukee, or I guess Executive Airport, and then I, I go past the one where you're coming south on 83 cro after you cross Lake Cook, because that's right where I live, and that one I noticed a lot. But those are the two. I'm, a, I'm I guess I'm making an assumption the rest of them might be that way, but that might be that might not be true. All right, we noted that. Thanks. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. All right, Commissioner Sprague. Anything? Nothing for me. Thank you, Commissioner Riles. I, I do have to say um, I was uh, proud and uh, uh, appreciative of the uh, Park District. They had their first annual uh, uh, 5K run walk this past Sunday, um, and they had 325 par participants in their first wow. one. And it was, uh, I got to commend the, the staff for putting it together. I guess it was... Uh, it came about in June or July, and they were able to uh, pull this thing off. And they had to turn people away um, because they simply didn't have enough, I guess, T-shirts and medals to award people. They could have easily gotten 500 participants for this fun run walk. And uh, uh, despite the conditions as far as the weather, uh, the, the, the entertainment value was... Uh, in my opinion, second to none, to keep um, the participants, once they finish, um, active and, and engaged and involved. And the local sponsors um, that participated, uh, Mia Cantina was one of them that participated. And uh, it, it was just uh, really refreshing to see the community come out and support um, not only what was happening at the park district, but um, you know to, to show their their dedication and loyalty to the, the, the village of Wheeling. So, um, and I was proud to be a part of it to help out, but I, I just thought it, it was very, very well put together. The staff Are did an running? exceptional job. I'm sorry? Are you running in it? That's a good, that's a good joke. <laughs> you just said participating. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was doing what I'm doing with you guys, running my mouth. So ah. <laughs> that's as much of the running that I was able to do. But um, no, it, they, they did a fantastic job. and. Um, you know, I just want to acknowledge that. I, I know we've had 5K runs before. I, maybe it wasn't the park district. I, I the rock and run is usually a 5K? Well, yeah, but there, there was one through the basically the same path. Oh, okay. Uh, towards Hinch Road in the past because I was volunteering with traffic control at the time. But I, maybe it wasn't the park district running it. Well, this one, I guess it was the uh, Day of the Dead. Um, and so that was their first run. I don't, oh, okay. I don't yeah. But um, again, they, they did an exceptional job putting it together. And uh, again, the fact that they could have easily had 500 people participate and they had to cut their number to 325 on their first year was yeah. it's pretty good. Well, thanks. Commissioner Sprague, anything? Nothing for me. All right. Uh, nobody else? Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>